and the brethren that have worked the services thus far. This is the day uh, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and sure enough be glad in it. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyhow. And thank God for his amazing grace. Thank God for his long suffering. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for Jesus, our wonderful uh, Savior. Uh, and he's sweet, we know. And so uh, as we continue to draw, draw closer to God, uh, let us remember, amen, that his life is a pattern for our lives. And as we live this life, there's always room uh, to grow. And so uh, let's continue to allow the Word of God uh, and the Holy Spirit of God uh, to direct our steps as we sojourn from earth, uh, sure enough, to glory. Uh, on this morning, we want to examine the book of Exodus. Exodus uh, chapter number 13. Exodus chapter number 13. And I like to read into your hearing, reiterate uh, the text. Uh, verse 17, 18, I want to add a text, verse number 21. Exodus chapter 13, verse uh, 17, 18, and we'll look at verse number uh, 21. Uh, listen to your Bible. The Bible reads, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, uh, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, Although that was near, for God says, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Verse 18, so God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. Drop down to verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and by night. Uh, let all those who believe in the grace say amen to the reading of the words. Uh, on this morning, I'd like for us to consider for a subject, uh, follow the leader. Uh, follow uh, the leader. Here we have a very familiar text talking about the precipice upon which the children of Israel were to leave or exit uh, the world, which is uh, Egypt is a picture of the world and Pharaoh thereof being a picture of Satan. And so God is delivering his people uh, out of the world and uh, away from uh, the devil. And so here we have uh, this particular text. And what's unique about this text is uh, the way in which God was delivering his people. The Bible says that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return uh, to Egypt. I want us to picture uh, our walk in this life uh, and how when you become a child of God, uh, leaving this world in which we live. We live in the world, but we're not of this world system. And, and how God, uh, through his providential will, is able to develop us in such a way that we are able to crawl before we walk and walk before uh, we run. And so God is ever directing, God is ever leading us in our lives as he directs our, our steps. And so when I think about uh, this passage, what is very interesting to me that I'd like to highlight on uh, this morning is the fact that God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines, verse 17, verse 18. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness, verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. Now the Bible lets us know that he led them Amen. Uh, around verse 18, by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And, and here is God's people. And, and, and it's very interesting, and I think it'll help us to understand that uh, these folk, God's folk, were being led into the wilderness. I, I want us to understand that you can be in the will of God and in the wilderness all at the same time. And so God has a purpose and God has a plan for our life. 
And sometimes we think that if you're in the wilderness, that you're lost. If you're in the wilderness, you're in the wrong place. But God led them in the wilderness. And if God is leading you, you're going to get where you need to go. When we look over, uh, if you will, you remember the 23rd division of the psalm. What the Bible lets us know, David lets us know, verse number two, that he leads us by the still waters. Uh, and verse number three, he lets us know that he leads us in the path of righteousness. And verse number four, and amen, he talks about, yea, though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I want us to know that you can be in the valley of the shadow of death and still be all right if God is leading the way. He leads us by the still water. He leads us in the path of righteousness. You can be in the wilderness and still, amen, in the will of God. When you look over in chapter number 14 of Exodus, in verse number 11 and following, God knows his people. And the Bible lets us know in verse number 11 of Exodus chapter number 14, uh, then they said to Moses, uh, because there were no graves, in Egypt, have you taken us uh, away to die where? In the wilderness. Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Now they were regretting their deliverance. Uh, is not uh, the word uh, that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptian. For it would have been better, amen, for us to serve the Egyptian than that we should uh, die in where? Well, the wilderness. And so they saw the wilderness as a problem. They, they, they neglected the fact that God was leading them by day, uh, amen, in a pillar of cloud. God was leading them by night uh, in a pillar of fire. God was leading the way, and yet they had a problem because they were in the wilderness. They had a problem because Pharaoh's army was coming up against them. Amen. And David, you know, David, David said, amen, that the battle's not mine, it's the Lord. But see, God's folk, amen, had to crawl before they can walk and had to walk before they can run. Listen to your Bible, verse number 13. The Bible says, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. I hear Paul saying to his son in the faith, Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and verse number 7, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so Moses says, amen, do not be afraid, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the, the, for the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more uh, forever, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold, amen, your peace. Isn't that a beautiful thing? But see, God's people had to come to know God. And, amen. And I want us to understand that there are some things that you can only learn in the wilderness. Uh, amen. And so God had a place to bring them, the promised land. Yeah? But, uh, but before he transported them from the world and Egyptian bondage to the promised land, he brought them through the wilderness. And I, again, want to emphasize that there's some things that you can only learn in the wilderness of this world. God is preparing us, children of God, Christians today, that we might be prepared for glory. And so God is teaching us about love. God is teaching us about faith. God is teaching us, amen, about forgiveness and all kinds of lessons that you can only learn in the wilderness of this loss and, amen, and fallen world. Turn with me in your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter number 8. In Deuteronomy, if you will, chapter number 8, amen, let's see why, amen, the Bible, God says that he's delivering them. Uh, amen, or, or directed them through uh, the wilderness. Now, bear in mind, the, the word Deuteronomy uh, means uh, second law. Amen. It is the book of uh, remembrance. We are dealing in Deuteronomy, not with the first generation that left Egyptian bondage, but with the second generation after uh, 40 years of wilderness wandering because that first generation was disobedient unto God, would not trust God, and as a result, a whole generation perished in the wilderness because they would not put their faith, confidence, 
and trust in God as he lead God and directed the way. And so we can learn from those things that were written before time that we don't end up in the situation that they ended up with having not known uh, the great God of heaven. In Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse number uh, 2. Deuteronomy 8 and verse number 2. Listen to your Bible. The Bible said, Moses said, listen to Moses. Moses said, and you shall remember. You shall remember that the Lord your God, what did he do? He led you all the way these 40 years in the where? wilderness. Why? To humble you and test you to know what was in your heart whether you would keep his commandment or not. And, and so God had a purpose uh, for the wilderness. Uh, amen. And he led them in the wilderness. Uh, amen. To test them. How many of you know that this life is just a test? Uh, amen. Whatever you're going through, it is just a test. It is a test designed to humble us and is a test designed to know what is in our hearts. And so God, amen, has, amen, a, a test for us. God has a purpose for this wilderness that we are living in, amen, and God wants to develop us down here so we will fit up there. And so don't despise the wilderness, but learn the lessons in the wilderness, and above all, hold to his unchanging hand. And so on this morning, I want to share with us very quickly, very quickly, uh, three, three, if you will, uh, ways in which God uh, leads us. How does God lead us today? Uh, three points in the lesson will be yours. Number one, we have the providential will of God. God leads us according to his will, and we'll talk about that. Number two, uh, God leads us by declaration, and I'll describe and, and paint the picture of what declaration entails. And number four, God leads us by discernment. And so three ways in particular that God leads us today. And, and you ought to follow the leader. He leads us by his providential will. He leads us by declaration. And he leads us by spiritual discernment. And so we have to understand. And above all, we have to follow uh -huh, the leader. Turn with me, if you will, to Acts chapter number 16. In Acts chapter number 16, uh, amen, very, very quickly. Uh, in Acts chapter number 16, the apostle Paul uh, and Silas were about uh, their father's business. And by the Holy Spirit, according to verse number 6, uh, amen, they were forbidden to preach the word in Asia. Uh, amen. And, and then... In verse number 9 of Acts chapter number 16, the Bible says a vision appeared to Paul uh, in the night. Uh, a man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And so the Bible lets us know, amen, that they immediately sought to go uh, to Macedonia. Verse 10, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, when you look down at verse number 12, the Bible says, and from there to Philippi, Philippi was the foremost uh, city uh, of that part of Macedonia. So Philippi is in uh, Macedonia. It's the foremost city. And there they came across a woman by the name of Lydia, uh, a man who uh, went by the riverside uh, because prayer was customarily made there. And they came across Lydia, who was a seller of purple, and they preached the gospel uh, to Lydia. And the Bible lets us know in verse 14 that the Lord opened uh, the heart, uh, her heart, to heed the things spoken uh, by Paul. And in verse uh, number 15, uh, Lydia and her household uh, were uh, 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 baptized. And so uh, that's a good thing. Amen. That, that, that's an exciting uh, thing. And, and you would think. Uh, that that's the reason why uh, Paul ended up going uh, to Philippi, which is the foremost city of Macedonia. And so we have done uh, the will of God. It turned out the way God had planned it. But don't you know that the providential will of God, uh, amen, involves God arranging circumstances so that you can be in a certain place at a certain time to fulfill God's will. I want us to understand that what Paul is about to 
jump into was not the plan of Paul, but is the plan of God. And some situation that you find yourself in in this life might not be your plan, and oftentimes is not your plan, but is God's plan, amen, because God is leading us, guiding us according to his providential will. Now, when we drop down a little bit further in verse number 16, you'll see why I say what I say. There was a slave girl there uh, with a spirit of divination in verse number 16. Uh, amen. And, and she brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. In verse uh, number 17, this slave girl with the spirit of divination followed Paul. Uh, amen. And walking behind Paul. And, and she was saying, amen, that these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And verse number 18, Paul got annoyed. Uh, with this servant girl walking behind him, uh, amen, and saying all of these things. And so uh, Paul says, in the name, in verse number 18, of Jesus Christ uh, to come out of her. He commanded, amen, this spirit of divination uh, to come out of this slave girl who was obviously, amen, uh, enslaved and bound by the devil. And, and the Bible lets us know that he came out, the spirit came out of this woman, and then when the master saw, verse number 19, that their hope of profit had gone, they seized Paul, dragged them to the marketplace, to the authorities. What's the point? The point is that they ended up incarcerated. They ended up beaten in verse number 22 with rods. In verse number 23, they laid uh, many stripes on Paul and Silas. And in verse number 24, they put them in the inner pr prison and fastened their feet in the stock. I want you to understand that the circumstances that Paul and Silas found themselves in was not Paul and Silas' plan. They did not plan to come to Philippi, uh, amen, the city in Macedonia, to be in prison. They did not plan to get beaten. They did not plan uh, to be incarcerated. But I want you to know that God has a plan for you. Uh, amen. And God will lead you in a certain direction to fulfill his will. Now, what's important, uh, amen, and good to know and an example for the church today, that when you find yourself in a negative situation, uh, amen, and you can barely compare what you go through to what Paul and Silas were going through, uh, amen, they were still able, in verse number 25, to sing hymns unto God, to praise God in the midst of the adversity that had nothing to do with what they did in terms of doing wrong. Paul and Silas did no wrong, but sometimes doing the will of God will put you in a negative circumstance, trying to do the will of God, trying to do what's right, and things, according to your mind, go wrong, but can you still praise God in the midst of your travail? Can you still praise God? In the midst of trouble, trial, and tribulation, Paul and Silas did. And as a result, the reason they ended up going uh, to Philippi, amen, the foremost city of Macedonia, was on account of the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison. God saw a man in that prison, amen, that needed Jesus. Amen. I don't know if God recognized that this man had a heart to obey the gospel. I don't know if, amen, the reason why God knows, but God sent a man, amen, in the prison, amen, at a time where he was on the shift, amen, that he might be impacted by the gospel to the saving of his soul, amen, to the displeasure of Paul and Silas. Nevertheless, it was God's will. And I want you to know, that sometimes God will allow you, amen, to go through a negative for a positive. I read somewhere where all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord to the cause according to his purpose, Romans 8 and verse number 28. And, and so here Paul and Silas, amen, and although it didn't feel, feel good, it worked out for the good. You know the story. At midnight, there was a great earthquake. Amen. Interrupted the song service. Amen. Woke up the keeper of the prison. Amen. Who thought that all of the prisoners had left because the bars of the doors had opened up, got ready to commit suicide. Paul said, do yourself no harm for we are all here. And then in verse number 30, 
uh, the keeper of the prison, the reason, according to the providential will of God, that he was in Philippi, said, Sirs, what must I do uh, to be saved? Isn't that something? These, this, this keeper of the prison saw God in Philip and God uh, in Silas and saw the impact of godly men, amen, in a negative circumstances and said, what must I do, uh, amen, to be saved? I want us to understand that Paul and Silas, uh, amen, really weren't in prison. They were the only ones that were free there. Amen. Those that are incarcerated are those that are still in their sin, bound by the devil. And so Paul and Silas in prison were free. Nevertheless, it was the God that needed to be delivered. And so Paul says in verse 31, amen, this is what you need to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you will be saved, you and your household. I want us to recognize that oftentimes folks say that's all you got to do is believe on the Lord. They're always stopping too soon. For the Bible declares in verse number 32 that they spoke the word of the Lord to them and all uh, and to all who were in uh, uh, in his household. And he took them that same hour uh, of the night, washed their stripe, and immediately he and his family were baptized. The Bible is right. Faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. They needed to believe on Christ. They needed to put their faith in Jesus Christ. And so Paul and Silas, they taught them the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as a result, the keeper of the prison was delivered, amen, from the kingdom of darkness. And so how did Paul and Silas get there? In that negative circumstances, I stopped by to remind us that it is the providential will of God. Don't be so caught up in your life that you can let your light shine so that in the appropriate time, you can say what's needed to save somebody's soul. Too often time you get so caught up and talking about how somebody, uh, amen, look there, oh, that's a nice dress, or uh, where do you get your hair done, or, or oh, I like that car, or, oh, you're a nice person, I got grandkids too. Talk about everything but the Lord. We have to recognize that God is moving and working in our lives and putting us in places at a particular time for a particular purpose. And what we need to do is pray to God that he will give us the boldness that we need to speak as we are at the appropriate time that we might, uh, with the help of the Lord, impact the heart to the saving of the soul. And so let's let God lead us. And even when you find yourself in a negative circumstance, look for the blessing and the lesson, amen, in life that you might be pleasing to God even in the midst of negativity. Uh, and so God leads us according to his providential will. Number two, God leads us according to declaration. When I say declaration, I'm talking about the commandments, the direct will of God as we see unfolded in the word of God. As we study the word of God, we see the will of God unfolded. And so God is so specific about so many things. Uh, amen. That we need to know the will of God if we're to do uh, those things that are pleasing unto God. Turn with me, if you will, uh, to the book of John. John uh, chapter number 13. John, if you will, chapter number 13. And John chapter number 13, I want to focus your attention, if you will, at verse number 34 and verse number 35. John uh, 13, verse 34 and 35. Listen to Jesus. Amen. We're talking about how God leads us. Number one, by his providential will. Amen. That subconscious, that, that unbeknownst to me type of direction uh, where God is putting us in places uh, at a particular time to fulfill a particular purpose. Number two, by declaration, the commandments, the word, the will of God. Listen to Jesus. Jesus says a new commandment. Amen. I give to you that you love one another. How so? As I have loved you, that you love one another. Now, now this seems kind of strange. You know, you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, what's so new about loving uh, one another? And, and matter of fact, we find that, amen, a command to love uh, one another in Leviticus chapter number 19. 
In Leviticus chapter number 19, and we're coming right back. Leviticus chapter number 19 and verse number 18, according to the old uh, covenant. A amen. And I want us to see the difference between what Jesus calls a new commandment and the command that he had given already under the Mosaic law. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse number 18. Listen to your Bible. The Bible says, you shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall, here come, love your neighbor as yourself, I am the Lord. And so we see love, obviously, uh, under the old covenant. But here we are in John chapter number uh, 13, and Jesus declares a new covenant I, I give to you that you love one another. Well, how are we to love one another? Uh, amen. Yes, you're to love your neighbor as yourself, but Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. And so Jesus elevated the kind of love that we are to have for one another. Believe it or not, if you love one another, uh, amen, uh, as yourself, you might not have much love for yourself. And, and so your neighbor, uh, amen, is not treated the way they should be treated. But Jesus said, love one another, how so? As he have loved us. And, and that's important for us to understand. Well, how did Jesus love us? Well, he loved us selflessly. He loved us uh, forgivingly. He long suffered with us. But in particular, he loved us sacrificially. Sacrificially. Now, in verse number 35, he said, By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. How are, you gonna, how, how are people going to know that we belong to him? Jesus says, amen, that if you love as he loved, then everybody's going to know that you are my disciples. Well, let's take a quick look at that sacrificial love. In Galatians chapter number 6 and verse number 2. Galatians, if you will, chapter uh, number 6 uh, and verse number 2. Listen to your Bible. The Apostle Paul says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill, here come, the law of Christ. We are to love sacrificially. We are to love as Christ uh, loved us. A amen. And so that requires, a amen, doing what's best. A amen. Even, a amen, when folk don't want to hear uh, what's best for them. In verse number one, uh, Paul said, brethren, if a man is overtaken in, in any trespasses, you who are spiritual, qualification restore such a one in a spirit uh, of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be, what, tempted. And so sometimes we got to say, amen, not what folk want us to say, but what folk need to hear. Why? Because we want to help them. And if you love them as Christ loved them, then you'll tell folk what they need to hear, even if they don't want to hear. Now, I want us to understand that we have a responsibility to one another to bear one another's burdens. And so I am into your business. I'm in here, amen, to uh, help uh, lighten your load. Uh, amen. And you are here to help me and I'm here to help you. And as a body of Christ, we are the family of God. And when the world see the family of God looking out for one another, loving one another, having one another's back, they'll say, I I want to be a part of that family, and they'll know that we are disciples of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, in understanding that, there's another layer that needs to be uh, clarified, because uh, many people, when you come to Christ, you really don't understand how to love. Love is just a mere word, and, and sometimes we don't have the proper definition of love, and so if you don't have the proper definition of love, then you can't love uh, others uh, properly as Christ has loved us if your definition is mistaken. Turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter uh, number 12. In Hebrews chapter number 12, uh, amen, and we look down at verse number 5. Hebrews 12 and verse number 5. Amen. Listen to your Bible. And you have, the Hebrew writer says, and you have uh, forgotten the ex exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, listen to this, do not 
despise what? The chastening or the discipline of the Lord. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he does what? He chastens and scourges every son, uh, amen, whom he receives. Now, here's what we uh, sometimes mess up in terms of understanding love. We think love always makes you happy. We think love always makes you happy. Amen. We have to understand that it ultimately will make you happy, but sometimes love does what needs to be do, needs to do, amen, to keep us, amen, in the will of God and from further harming one another. But when you think that love always equals happiness, then you won't do what needs to be done to help a brother, to help a sister out. Uh, it, it reminds me, uh, amen, of the story uh, uh, of a boy, you know, back in the day, uh, amen, when you, when you get in trouble, you know, a lot of times, and mama said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you wait till your daddy, wait till your daddy gets home, wait till your daddy gets home, but this boy, uh, amen, got in trouble, uh, amen, and, and, and had so messed up that mama said, I can't wait uh, till your daddy get home, go get me that switch, and so he got the switch, got the belt, and got ready to, amen, discipline the boy. And, and, and you know, the mother said, well, you know, what, what, what they used to say back in the day, these times, these days, the parents scared of their children. I don't know what the problem is, but uh, amen. But the, the, the mother said, you know what she said? She said, uh, amen, son, this is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever heard that? Mm -hmm. This, this, huh? this going to hurt me. Excuse <laughs> me. This going to hurt me. My wife correct me. This going to hurt me uh, more than it's going to hurt you. And then the boy uh, got smart. He said, well, mama, I don't want you to be hurt. I tell you what, give me the belt. <laughs> give, give me the belt. Since, since it's going to hurt, since it's going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me, give me the belt because I don't want you to be hurt like that, mama. I don't want you to be hurt like that. I, I want us to understand that love does something for us. That, amen. Love helps us. It corrects us. It blesses us, but it don't always make you happy. When we look down in Hebrews chapter number 12 again, verse number 11, listen to your Bible. The Bible says, now no chastening or discipline uh, seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. God loves us. But if you don't ever now and then check us, amen, amen, check yourself before you wreck yourself. If he don't check us every now and then, then we'll go way off in the wilderness and hurt ourselves in a way, amen, that is devastating. So God doesn't want us. Amen. To lose our mind, our mind to jump time and all of that kind of stuff. So God pulls us back. Amen. Within the boundaries of, amen, the way. And so love one another as Christ loved us, which means there are times when we got to bear one another's burden. There are times when we got to say things that folk don't want to hear. Turn with me, if you will, to Romans chapter number 15. In Romans, if you will, chapter number 15, Romans chapter number 15, verse number one. Uh, listen to your Bible. We're trying to understand uh, the kind of love uh, that leads us, amen, uh, amen, not the kind of love that leads us, but how God leads us, and he leads us according to declaration, uh, which are uh, his word, his commandments, his will, and, and Jesus said to love. Now, in verse number 15, verse number 1, uh, chapter 15, verse number 1 of Romans, listen to your Bible. We then who are strong, listen to, listen to Paul, Paul says, ought to bear with the scruples or the weaknesses of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. Uh, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Sacrificial love. And so we have to learn to love as Christ hath loved us. And, and, and so God's commandments, uh, his word is one of the ways that he directs us or leads us. He leads us by the providential will. He leads us by the command and the word and the will of God, which is unfolded in the word of God. And then finally, 
He also leads us, amen, and follow the leader now. He also leads us according to discernment, spiritual discernment. Look at me, if you will, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, if you look down at verse number 12, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 12, listen to your Bible. The Bible says, now we have received the child of God, not the spirit who is of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Drop the verse for 14. But the natural man, this is the unsaved man, does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And it's spiritually discerned. And so uh, God's Holy Spirit uh, has a way of directing us uh, in a way that you might not see a specific command of God, but you know, according to the Spirit of God, that this is not the will of God. And, and so when you are filled with the Holy Spirit as a child of God, and we allow the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct us, amen, you will be able to discern, amen, uh, things that you are exposed to, experiences that you might uh, uh, encounter in this life that, that, that you know, according to the Spirit, is not right. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, one of the sisters uh, uh, sent me a text just this past week. And uh, she had a, a, a Bible. You know how people are always messing with these graphics. And so there was a Bible in the shape of a Glock 45 pistol. So it was a Bible. It said Holy Bible on the top, but it was a pistol. Uh, and the caption was, amen, that, that, that the devil is busy, but I'm fully loaded. Now, there's no scripture that says that the Bible ought not uh, resemble a bullet and a gun and and we are, you know, we have to understand that there are some things that we ought to know spiritually discern that is not right. Although somebody's trying to make a point, but the Spirit of God says that that point was not made in an appropriate way. And amen. The last thing, amen, that the Word of God, amen, that we, that we should see the Word of God as a gun and shooting people. We are trying to heal and help people, uh, but the connotation, a uh, connotation of the Bible shaped like a gun, uh, amen, and shooting the devil down and all this. Listen to your Bible, Second Corinthians chapter number twelve uh, and verse number uh, four. Listen to your Bible. Uh, for the weapons of our warfare, the Bible says are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down uh, arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge uh, of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And, and so our warfare, and we are in a wilderness land, this is a battlefield, but we don't war like the world. Amen. There's a whole lot of folk that got devil in them, but we don't take the word of God and shoot them dead. And amen. We are trying to help people and bring people into a knowledge of the truth and, and, and that they might be delivered, amen, from uh, the bonds of the devil. And so spiritual discernment would help us to know that some things that seem like a gray area you can determine is right or wrong according to the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. It's like uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 16 and following. If you remember when Solomon became king, uh, his first case involved uh, two harlots that, uh, amen, had children, uh, amen, uh, and they lived in the same house, two infant children, and they both went to sleep, and one of the mothers rolled over and, and smothered the child, and, and in the middle of the night, she took her dead baby and, and switched it with the other mother's live baby, and, and, and in the morning, the mother that uh, had the live baby looked, and the baby that was under her was dead, and she examined, and she said, now, wait a minute, this is not my baby. And she looked and she said, that's my baby. And the woman said, no, that's not your baby. This is my baby. And they took the case uh, over there to David. Uh, I mean, to Solomon. Amen. And Solomon uh, saw these two women going back 
and forth, uh, claiming that the baby is theirs. And Solomon said, bring me a sword. And amen. And I'll cut the baby in half. I'm going to give you half and I'm going to give you half. And that should settle the matter. And, 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 and the mother, the true mother said, no, give the child to her. And Solomon said, that's your baby. I, I want us to understand that spiritual discernment is one of the ways that God leads us and guides us and directs us. So what have we discovered? Providential will. God leads us by providential will. What have we discovered? God leads us by declaration, the commands of God as we study the word and the will of God. And then spiritual discernment with the Holy Spirit in the child of God to help us with the wisdom of God to determine what is right and what is wrong in the experiences that we encounter in this life. And lastly, in Acts chapter number 8, Acts chapter number 8, in Acts chapter number 8, uh, we have an example, a man of uh, a, a, an opportunity for evangelism. Amen. And the Bible lets us know in verse number 29, Acts 8, uh, in verse number 29, the, uh, 26, 27, and 28 lets us know uh, about, uh, amen, a man who was an Ethiopian eunuch. This was an unsaved man uh, who was coming back from Jerusalem uh, uh, to worship. A amen. And, and as he was returning, and in verse 28, and sitting uh, in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, there are times when the Holy Spirit, don't quench the Spirit, there are times when the Holy Spirit in you will direct you to a person to have a conversation about God. And it is in that moment, that opportunity, that window of time that their heart might be more receptive than any other time in their life. And if the Holy Spirit is moving you to say something to a person that they might uh, quicken, that, that, that the word of God might have a place in their heart, minister to their spirit, motivate them to come to Christ, then you, amen, ought to allow God to use you through the uh, spiritual discernment that you need to help an individual come to Christ. And so the spirit in verse 29 said to Philip, and you are the Philip child of God, go near and overtake the chariot. Philip ran to him, heard this man, the Ethiopian eunuch, uh, reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And now they're going to have a Bible study. Uh, amen. You might be talking to somebody and say, man, I just, I don't know what it is about you, but I, I, my, my, I've I, been drawn to you. I see you over here and and I, I just, I just, I don't know, but uh, are you a child of God? And, amen. If God were to come today, would, would you be right with the Lord? Do you realize that one day we all have to stand before God? I don't know what you need to say, but the Holy Spirit will direct you in what to say, but you need to say something to the saving of a soul, and that might be your only opportunity in the line at Walmart, or over there at the clinic, over there at the pharmacy, or over there at the gas station. You might have a window of time by which you, Philip, can impart, implant the, the, amen, the spiritual word, the seed of the word into amen, a heart that is receptive to the saving of a soul. But we got to speak. And so Philip says, how can I, uh, amen, uh, the eunuch says, how can I unless someone guides me? And they had a Bible study. In verse number uh, uh, 34, amen. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, uh, of whom does the prophet say this of himself or some other man? Philip opened his mouth, verse 35, and, and beginning at the scripture, what did he do? He preached Jesus. We got to start preaching Jesus. Uh, we have received the commandment of God, the declaration, where Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we have to follow. We have to allow the leader to direct us. And through God's word, you know we have a command and a commission of God to go into all the world, amen, that, that, that those who are receptive may be indeed uh, saved. And so the Bible lets us know that he preached Jesus in verse number 35 and verse number 36. Now, as they went down 
uh, the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here's water. What hinders me from being what? Uh, baptized. And, and folks need to know that you don't have to wait till Sunday to be baptized. You don't have to wait till Sunday to get right with God. You need to get right with God when you hear and understand the gospel uh, of God. The Bible lets us know on the day that you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. And so we need to let the world know that salvation, amen, is available to you and it's closer than you think. Amen. You don't have to wait till Sunday. You don't have to wait for the preacher. You don't have to wait, amen, for this person and that person. You know enough to tell them the truth that they might obey the gospel to the saving of their soul. And so the eunuch said, what hinders me from being baptized? Verse 37, Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, Amen. He says, you may. Amen. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Now, now, if that's all he needed to say, uh, amen, then he would have went away rejoicing. But the text does not say that. In verse 38, amen. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. Amen. The reason he had to stop the chariot is because there's water in God's plan of salvation. He was not saved when he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He was on the way to salvation, but he hadn't got there yet. So he had to stop the chariot. And in the middle of a desert, they found some water. Verse 38, so he commanded the chariot to stand still. How much water? And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Baptism is a burial. It is not a sprinkling so your hair don't get wet. It is not some ceremonial thing where you just kind of wave your hand and tell somebody that they're good. Uh, baptism is a burial. And Romans chapter number 6 verse 1 through 4 lets us know that we are buried with Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. In the watery grave of baptism. And so when somebody is buried, they are completely covered. And so there must be enough water for the person to be submerged. Uh, and so the Bible lets us know, uh, amen, that after he baptized in verse 39, now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip uh, away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way, what? Uh, rejoicing. Why did he rejoice? Because he did what God had commanded him uh, to do in order to be saved. And so there may be some that are with us even on uh, this morning. Uh, amen. Who feel saved, but uh, amen. You need to make your call and election sure. Uh, according to the Bible, there isn't but one plan for the saving of a man. And the Bible lets us know, Romans 10, 17, so then faith uh, come by hearing and hearing not by anything, but by the word of God. Well, what must I hear? Amen. Hebrews eleven six. but without faith, it's impossible to please God for he that come to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I have to hear the word of God. I have to put my faith in Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the Bible lets us know that the good news of Jesus Christ consists of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, my Lord. And upon hearing the good news of Jesus Christ, believing, uh, amen, the good news of Jesus Christ, repenting of your sin, Luke 13, 3, uh, confessing Jesus to be Lord, Matthew 10, 32, and being, uh, amen, baptized for the remission of your sin, then God adds you uh, to the the church uh, in Acts 2 and 47, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church. God, the Lord is the one that does the adding, add to the church daily those that are being saved. And Acts uh, in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26 and 27, for you are all sons of God uh, through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ. And so many people say they're saved, but they've never been baptized. How are you going to be into Christ and when baptism puts you into Christ and you were never baptized? And so he says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have what? Put on Christ. Amen. The child of God have put on Christ. And when do we put on Christ? In the watery grave of baptism. And in baptism, God washes away your sin fills you with the Holy Spirit, uh, adds your roster, amen, to the population of the saved, that is the church, and you must live 
faithful until he calls you from labor to reward. Revelation 2.10, be thy faithful unto death and he promised you a crown of life. And so let the Lord lead you. Don't let the TV lead you, the radio lead you. Don't let grandmama and papa and your sister and cousin lead you. Let the word of God lead you. The only You only have one soul. And the Bible lets us know, uh, amen, that the soul is of more value than all the world. Amen. And so make sure your call and election is sure. Make sure that you are in the body of Christ. Christ only has one body because he only has but one church. And you need to be in the population of the saved, which is in the church of Christ. You need to be in the body of Christ. He's coming back for the bride, not some other woman. He's coming back for the church that he hung, bled, and died for. The church that his blood purchased, amen, uh, amen, with the horrors of the cross. And you need to be in the population of the saved. And, and Matthew uh, chapter 7 and 21, Jesus said, Not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father in heaven. So there's a lot of folks saying, Lord, Lord, Lord. But the question is, have you done what thus saith the Lord? And so not everybody talking about heaven is going. We are concerned about your soul. And in order for you to be saved, you have to come the Bible way. And amen. And so what we're saying on this morning is let God lead you. Let his providential will cause you, amen, to say yes to the cross. Let his commandments, amen, substantiate the will of God as he directs you towards salvation and how to live. Let the spirit of God, the spirit of discernment, help you to understand, amen, uh, truth from error, right from wrong, as you try to allow God, to, as you allow God to lead God and direct your life. Follow the leader, even on this morning. We love you with the love of the Lord. It is our prayer that you will come to the Lord, to the saving of your soul. Uh, here at the Church of Christ, you can ask Bible questions. Uh, amen. And it is our commitment to you to give you a Bible answer for your Bible question. Believe it or not, there's a lot of places you go in this life and a lot of religious institutions and you have questions, but you dare not ask because questions are not allowed there. But here at the Church of Christ, you can ask your Bible question and we'll do our diligence to get you a Bible answer because you need to know what thus saith the Lord and it's in the declaration of God's word that we find his will. And so we love you with the Lord, or with the love of the Lord and it's our prayer. And amen, that something was said this morning to guide you, encourage you uh, to follow God. Let him lead God and direct you to the saving of your soul that when it's his time to call and your time to answer, you may hear, well done and welcome. Uh, visit us at the Church of Christ. Uh, we can be reached at 843-824-1217. We're also on the web at www.goosecreekchurchofchrist.com. We'd love to hear from you. For, from you. Uh, amen. We're here to uh, assist you in any way that we can. We all want to make heaven our home, but Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So let God direct your steps. May God bless you uh, and keep you. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, amen.